Then I started hanging out by myself because that's, I'm a lone wolf. I realized egomaniac parents aren't the best thing to have. Well, did, you, you were not photographed with your mother? Well, I was there. How so many photos do you have with your mother? That. Show me that one again. It's right here. But she's not in that photo. She should be. Now, Daddy, it's Rodney, what's happening? Wow. I don't know, I think I'm gonna be really late. We're still, wor we're still working. I think I'm gonna be really late. Can you get a photo of all of us together here? Okay. okay. Sharon, I got something I wanna give you. I forgot to give it to you. It's been a while. And this is, I got this on one of my first trips to Hollywood. And I never got around to giving this to you. So I figured it's better late, better now than late than never. Oh, thank you, Rodney. And you remember when I first went to Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. Sure do. Presley. Oh, to Sharon. To from... Sharon from Elvis Presley. <laughs> oh, Rodney, thank you. I just never got around to giving that to you. Oh, oh goodness. Mm. Oh, this is incredible. Touche. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I noticed all the family photographs you got back there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rodney's not here. He's hanging up in the other room. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. are these pictures? Well, that's Bing, I, Bing, and, uh... Do you have any pictures of Rodney? Yeah, in the other room. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no. yeah, no. Yeah, him well, with the Beatles and him yeah, with the... Uh, Roger Clinton. Roger Clinton, oh, Roger yeah. Clinton. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Oh, we've got, uh, we've got a lot of you clipping. Oh, so with me, a lot of clip with, um, with the Easter Bunny in the other room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we have... Oh. But what we have, they're all in scrapbooks. They're just, you know, pictures that he would send, that mm -hmm. stories could about... We see, could we see one? Sure. Yeah, honey, get the book. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about um, the Easter Bunny photo? <laughs> oh, yeah, you want to see good. that? That was good. Yeah, it's in here. Here's the Easter Bunny photo. <laughs> That's me and with the Easter Bunny. <laughs> well, now I guess Dad will have to put that in the frame because it's. Could you come Daddy, here for a Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> We're still making the circuit. Yeah, I. I I'm in this way a little bit. I guess there's not going many albums here. Either. I found Cato's picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you have Cato's picture? Oh. He sent it to us. What are you looking for, Ben? Picture of Rodney's, Rodney's pictures. <laughs> no. Let me see. Uh, oh. That's a color shot. What are some of your thoughts about what we've been doing, the project and everything? Mm, seems okay. Mm. Do you have some concerns? Well, yeah, you know, it's my life. <laughs> you know, I'm a very quiet person. I'm very, you know, very private. What are some of your worries or concerns? Well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> some, <laughs> really. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Los Angeles was a place that people came to to die out of their old selves, to leave their past behind. The potential of becoming somebody else, of becoming a star, of becoming someone who was 
so much better or so much more perfect than the person you left behind. I want to have a 3D life. I want to have a, a technical, a, I want to live a technical life as opposed to a black and white life, you know? So I had nowhere to go, so I ended up here on the streets of L.A. At, at 17. And Rodney was one of the people that we aspired to, you know, be like. OK, I'm going to run away to Los Angeles. I'm going to find Kim Valley. I'm going to find Rodney Bingenheimer. We are iron because we overcome catastrophic pain on a daily basis. That's why I don't do drugs, because I don't want to be numb. I want to feel the, the pain. I want the clarity of the challenge. I want to win. I want to kick in the head. I want to tear the throat box out. I want to smash in the lungs. I want to kick in the rib cage. I want to split the spine. And I want to use your phone, make love to your wife, sister, eat your dog, and leave your house with a good cassette. That's how I am. I'm at war. I'm at war with myself. I'm at war with you. I'm at war with everybody. Kim Fowley and Rodney, oh, yeah. dogs of war. <laughs> We're going to go out and look for um, this band. What is it? No Doubt. Who is, who is no, no Doubt? doubt. Yeah. Who are they? <laughs> Hello. No Doubt. They're like the biggest band in the world right now. They're on cover of all these magazines. They're from Orange County. Really? And, you know, I used to play them back when they were a punk band. Do you know what Godhead means? Godhead? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you a godhead? It's like the highest compliment. Is it? It's the yes. highest compliment? Yeah, yeah. You said I'm a godhead. You're a godhead. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that is, that's sweet. I have a niece whose name is Desiree, and uh, she's totally into No Doubt. We went to the K-Rock Acoustic Christmas, and No Doubt was there, and Gwen was there, and, and Rodney bent over backwards. It, pushing people out of the way. And, he, and he's like, she's ready to go on stage. She's like, but Gwen, wait, you have to get this for, for Desiree. And, and it's like, people don't do that. They don't care, you know? He's, he's like that. Who is Camille? Camille is someone I really care about and I think about a lot and, and love her very much. I don't know anybody else like him. A lot of people have looked after me, and I should return the favor. I think that's the way it should be. Look after people and take care of people. And <laughs> I'd like to introduce Mr. Ronald Vaughn. He um, actually hitchhiked out here from Houston, Texas, we saw an article in my club in People Magazine. So Ronald, why don't you tell us your story? You came out here from Houston and... Yeah, same state that Jennifer Love Hewitt's from, but I'm from Houston now. I always want to be a musician and I decided to come to uh, California. We always kind of look after Ronald Vaughn and help him out, give him money, and always have problems with rent and stuff. I like him, you know? I feel sorry for him. I, I, I moved to California so I can get some opportunity in the music business and make a life for myself. What was your relationship like with your parents? That's something I really don't really want to discuss very much. It was, you know, I was an adopted only child and uh, it just just was, it was not a positive relationship, let's put it that way. I, it, I did not ask to be adopted by those people. Okay. I, I try to get creative work done, you know, past the point of survival. Because what is the point of life if one just barely survives? That's no fun. Because my, my plans for a music career have been too long in coming, you know. And I'm in a crucial stage where I must succeed. 
We all want to be the golden calf secretly. We, we all do. People are pretending we don't, but everybody that gets a taste of fame wants to be the golden fucking calf. Fame itself has become a kind of cure-all. Yeah, yeah, I'm here with Phil Spector. Phil Spector's annual bowling party. A happy birthday. I have a surprise for you. I collect the, the bridge between the famous and the not so famous people. It's like you go to a party and, and you're, there's some drunk people there. Um, you're the designated driver. Well, I'm the designated driver between the famous and the not so famous. I think he's like Andy Warhol. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absol Did I say that? Yeah. You are you totally like the West Coast. Really? Andy Warhol. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Rodney is very reminiscent of Andy Warhol in that, gee, wow, his persona becomes this big blank screen that draws and bounces off of, of like, crazy talented people. Did you meet well, I knew Andy, I knew Warhol? Andy. Yeah, there's a picture of me and Andy up there. And did you get on really well? Yeah, oh yeah. Andy was so a great guy. I'm here babysitting Rodney Bingenheim. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Joe. Okay, we just heard the letter bomb by the Circle Jerks, a brand new album. And... Dedicated to you, no doubt. <laughs> right. I was approached by K Rock. They used to hang out in the club. And they'd see all these amazing stars hanging out. We were, hey, we should get this guy. Rodney was first on the radio August 22nd, 1976. Approximately 15 months after his club closed, Rodney had his own show. I'd be playing demos, a lot of the early punk stuff, like the Sex Pistols and the Germ. I'd show up with a stack of records, Ramones, The Dam, and Blondie. People are saying, what is this? What kind of music is this? Yes, who's this? This is Sex Pistols. from London? Yes. Yeah. Is this Yes. One, two, three, four! This is Rodney and Dean, I remember. Oh, hi, man. We play your records a lot here. I'm the only one who plays them. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Hey. I don't want a holiday in the sun. I want to go to the new house. I want to see some history. Weren't you the first one to play Cheap Trick and also Devo? Devo. 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 <laughs> 